Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of May. In May, I uh, planned on participating in more readathons than I actually ended up getting into, but that's fine. Um, the primary thing that I was able to participate in is the Asian readathon, um, kind of the springathon as well, and then um, the, there was a 24 and 7 over on Instagram that I also participated in. Um, so I'll just go through the books that I read. I'll start with the ones that I finished and then I'll talk a little bit about the ones that I read parts of. So the first book that I finished this month was My Alcoholic Escape from Reality by Nagata Kabi. This is the second installment in uh, the My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness uh, memoir manga series and I really enjoyed this. I gave it 3.75 stars. Um, Parts of that feel so arbitrary. Um, really, star ratings feel kind of arbitrary, but I'm not about to unpack that right now. But this really focuses on one single year of her life where she was um, hospitalized for alcoholism. And she talks about kind of like the physical aspects of that and what it was like being in the hospital. It was really interesting to read. Having um, people in my life that have dealt with alcohol problems so there was like a kind of a personal piece I guess um but also I really like what this did in the context of like the trajectory of her memoir series one of the things that I really like about the series as a whole um even though the first one was my favorite I do like that in later one she's really talking about the experience of writing memoir and of putting yourself out there like that and the um kind of struggle of sharing without oversharing um, and I thought that was really interesting. And after reading this, I'm really anticipating whatever she decides to share next. Next, I read The Magic Fish by Trung Li Nguyen. And this is the best standalone graphic novel that I've read all year. This focuses on Tien, who is Vietnamese American. And he likes to spend time with his mom reading fairy tales. He reads them to her in English to kind of help her learn. But he is finding an issue because he wants to come out to his mom but doesn't know the words in Vietnamese and of course she doesn't know the ones in English. Um, so in this you get his story, you also get the fairy tales, and you get parts of the mom's story, both her present and her past in Vietnam. Uh, it's woven together beautifully. I love how he uses color and the details within the artwork. There's so much attention to detail particularly when it comes to fashion, um, particularly in the fairy tales, depending on whose head you're in. I adored this. Next, I finally finished Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I read a decent chunk of it for Springathon, even though I finished up the last little bit um, afterwards. But this is excellent, and really everyone should read it. It is nature writing, um, but it's also way more than that. This is a uh, about an indigenous woman who is also a botanist's experience um, being in science, like the scientific field, and how they treat the environment as an object um, rather than something that you're having a back and forth with. And she's talking about that in context with her indigenous culture, which very much does treat that as a back and forth. So she talks about like being a scientist, dealing with issues with people, like not taking certain parts of her seriously. There's also a larger critique in here about society, about Western capitalist society, and uh, talking about different things that we could gain from various native cultures, including this idea of reciprocity with the environment and also people around us and the importance of thankfulness. There's a lot in here that's just really beautiful. And if you have not read this yet, please, please do. I do recommend the audiobook, which is what I used for the majority of the time. I have listened and then put in my tabs uh, kind of as I was going. Um, but the author reads the audiobook and it's really wonderful. Next, I finished the fifth installment of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagata Kabi. Can't really talk too much about this specific volume. I will say that I am scared to read number six because I hear it's sad and I can't get a hold of the seventh volume because they're having problems printing a lot of different mangas. So I'm stressed, but it's fine. I'll figure it out. This is really great. 
like I've said before, the per perfect balance of wholesomeness and horror undertones. Next, I read Depart Depart by Sim Kern. This is a queer sci-fi climate fiction novella that focuses on Noah, who is a Jewish trans man. After this uh, natural disaster happens, while he's dealing with all of this, he starts seeing the ghost of his great-grandfather who fled Nazi Germany. This says so much about um, identity, like trans identity, Jewish identity, but also community. That is integral to this. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. I don't want to say too much, though, because it is a novella. So I don't want to, you know, give away too much. Um, but I adored this. I really, really want a sequel. I don't know if there's one in the works, but I really want it. The next book that I finished was The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons. This is the story of Spencer, who is a trans boy who's going into a new school, stealth. That's his plan anyway. Of course, romance and wanting to play soccer kind of throw some roadblocks in front of that. There is so much that I loved about this. Um, there were so many characters that I just really adored. I really liked the family dynamics. A lot of YA can tend to kind of put like the parents in the back seat, but his parents and his sibling played a pretty big role. Um, I can't personally speak about the autism rep, but his brother is autistic. And I think that this is, at least from like using what I've, crit criticisms that I've heard from the autistic community, this is probably the best representation that I've personally seen um, looking at like families and how they treat autistic kids. But on top of that there's a nuanced conversation about coming out, also about religion. While the main character doesn't come from a religious family, one of the other characters does and it kind of explores that. And while it's talking about these kind of intense issues, there's stuff about religion, there's also like barriers um, in sports and whatnot, there's a lot in here that's positive, which is so incredibly necessary, especially right now. 2021 has been a horrendous year for anti-trans legislation, even worse than 2016, the year of the bathroom bill, where everybody was talking about that shit. And as someone in a state that keeps putting up these shitty laws, um, it was really nice to see something that um, had that little bit of light even while they were talking about the issues. So I highly recommend getting this. It is coming out June 1st, or by the time this is up, it will already be out. Um, so go get a copy or request it from your library. The final book that I finished this month is Captive Genders, edited by Eric A. Stanley and Nat Smith. I've talked about this book in uh, how many wrap-ups in TBRs? Um, it's finally done, and I mean, I've already talked, you know, bits and pieces about it. This is an anthology that focuses on um, trans people in the prison industrial complex, so talking about how trans people are impacted by prisons and also how prisons recreate certain structures that further oppress trans people. This has sections of it that are written by scholars, sections of it that are written by people who have been imprisoned, and this was just incredible. It was very hard to read, hence why it took Brianna and I months to read it. Um, but if you are even marginally interested in activism, I think that you need to understand this problem. And this is a great book to start with. I think that there are a ma the majority of this is really accessible. I think there are only one or two pieces that are more like kind of theory led and maybe a little bit dense. Um, but the majority of it, I think, is pretty really accessible. So five star, absolute must read. Next, I can talk about the books that I worked on or started during the month. The first book that I have, I started during the Springathon, and that is Eating Animals by Jonathan Saffron Foyer. This explores um, our cultural habits of eating meat and looking kind of at the sustainability aspect of it or the lack of sustainability. I only got to about page 45, um, oh, not for any particular, like, reason. It's not like I put it down because it was bad or something. It just, 
happened like that. I do want to eventually get back to reading it uh, because it was very interesting and I actually saw some little connections with some of the critique and discussion that was being had in Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, it was interesting to see that um, like as I was reading this because I was like oh this is this is something that she was talking about but like in a, in a very different way. Of, like I said I'm only on page 45. Um, I do want to get back to this even though I won't be prioritizing it during Pride. I also read a little bit of Sister Outsider. I only got through like a couple readings maybe. Um, this is Audre Lorde's essay collection. Audre Lorde is an incredibly important black lesbian activist. If you don't know who she is, get this book and read it. Um, I'm a little over halfway through it and I intend to finish it next month. I also started on anti-semitism, solidarity, and the struggle for justice in Palestine by Jewish Voice for Peace. This is another anthology. It has readings from uh, Jewish people, particularly marginalized Jewish people, as well as students and activists. And it's talking about like the history of the Palestinian struggle and also the history of anti-Semitism and uh, kind of unpacking a lot of that. I didn't get a ton of the way through. I got through the first few readings and it is definitely something that I'm going to continue to read ongoing. Even though I'm not that far in it, I've already learned a lot of things. Um, coming from the Evangelical South, there are only very specific narratives about it that you get, which is all at once anti-Palestine and anti-Semitic and generally a train wreck. Um, so I thought this was a good place for me to start learning a little bit more about it outside of what I've learned from people online. Then the final book that I started during this month is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Kareen which I was super excited for, am still super excited for, even though I've hit like a small sort of slump. Um, I'm about halfway through and I intend on finishing it over the next few days. I adore John Green. I adore the Anthropocene Reviewed and this, um, he edited a lot of the things that he did for the Anthropocene Reviewed, but added in, I think maybe a little bit more kind of memoir and also contextualized it. Um, a whole lot like he talks about being like in the pandemic and kind of reflecting on some of that um, and it's just excellent so far. I can already tell that this unless something really horrendous happens in the last half of the book this is probably going to be a five star. So those are my books for the month of May. If you've read any of those let me know what you thought about it down in the comments and thank you all so much for watching. Bye!